Hello, everyone. Whoa. You okay? I think, yeah, I think I have one of my I have one of my streams on, so it's really loud. <laughs> there it is. So whew, the music came on really loud. Brett said, okay, we're live. And then it <laughs> ah, the transition. Which is odd because we're going to be talking about music tonight, right? Um, hello, everyone, and welcome to Silver Sunday. Uh, I think I've got to start numbering these. I can't. I think this is three, uh, but we're going to talk about. Uh, well, it says what music do you listen to while writing? Uh, I think we should probably actually say what music do you listen to while creating, um, and, and and that's what we're going to really talk about tonight. Uh, a, a few brief updates here. Uh, for those of you who back the the uh, Silverline Double Feature Divinity and Twilight Grim, uh, the files have been sent off to the printer. We got the money from, I'll, I'll put an update on Kickstarter as well. Files have been sent off to the printer though, so now we are just uh, waiting on um, Kablam to do, our, our lovely printer Kablam, to print the, print the books and then I will get them and then we will ship them to you. Um, I do not have, for those of you who pledged for Alex Sarabia pages, um, those pages are coming from Mexico, and I do not have those yet. I don't <coughs> think it's going to be the same situation that we find ourselves in with the, the Kalis 2 pages from um, Argentina, which still have not been sent because all the Argentinian post offices are closed. Um, so I'll actually take a picture of your Kalis books, let you know I still have them here and they're just waiting for artwork. Um, and as you've seen, uh, we started posting uh, yesterday about the Kickstarter we've got coming up, which will be uh, Bloodline One Shot and Friar Rush number one. The Bloodline One Shot is just, that's it, it's just a one shot and Friar Rush is going to be uh, a three issue mini series. So um, we've got that coming up, so get ready for that. Um, I think that's really it for for the news. Anybody else got any news? Nope. Okay, so I'm gonna go around and uh, have everybody introduce themselves. Uh, I'm Roland. I am the writer of Cat and Mouse and kind of the chief wrangler here. Um, and the first up on my murderer's row here is Curtis Fujita. Curtis, introduce yourself. Hello, I'm Curtis Fujita. I'm an artist. Uh, in console video games animation. I'm the editor on the Kayla series at Silverline, and I'm also the creator. Nice. Barb! Tell folks who Hi. I am Barb Kelberg, and I am the creator and part, part of the co-writer and the anchor for Divinity, which just concluded um, a successful Kickstarter. I'm the anchor for Cat and Mouse, which is pages I'm working on now. Colorist for Sirens, uh, the anchor for an upcoming uh, book that doesn't have a name yet. I don't think that's the <laughs> title. And I am also the CFO of the Silver Line Comics, so I wear, I wear many, many hats. Yes. Yeah, and we are going to get a name for that because um, we can't keep just calling it Champion. That Spirit. book. <laughs> that book, yeah. That book. We could we could just say, hey, it's something big coming up, right? <laughs> Becca's like, no, you can't. Yeah. That's my line. <laughs> All right, Pete, tell everybody who you are. Yeah, hi everybody. I'm I'm Pete. Um I, I don't have as many titles as everybody else so far. Uh I'm just the I'm just the artist or the, the penciler on the uh, um the unnamed book, uh Champion of Miss Fury. Um that's, that's all I can say. Sorry, it's all a bit of a come you know, down after everybody I, else. But. I, I, I will have to say this, Pete. I have never, I've you know, been doing comics a long time, been around a lot of people at conventions. I have never heard an artist say, "I'm just the artist." I'm just, I'm just the artist. Yeah. I've heard writers and and, and <laughs> letterers say, "Yeah, I'm just the writer," or "I'm just the letterer." Right? I've heard that many times at conventions, but I don't think I've ever heard an artist say, I'm just, I'm just the artist. I'm just just a little penciler, that's what I do. <laughs> Trust me, pencilers are huge for me. Yes. The penciler can either make it a very enjoy enjoyable experience or a horrible experience. So. Well, hopefully it'll be enjoyable. And, <laughs> I'm looking and, forward. and uh, Pete gets the, uh, the tie for our favorite uh, accent on uh, our stream tonight. Uh, I'll let you know who the other one is tied with when we get to them. 
Um, <laughs> next up, thanks, Pete, is Aaron. Aaron, tell people who you are. Uh, I am the artist on the upcoming Fire Rush series, and I do my own comic book, Goblins, which you can find on Webtoons and on my store. And so I draw and write my own stuff, but I'm the artist for the Fire Rush for Silverline. That's my contribution to Silverline. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. And what an interesting story that is, right? The reconnection uh, story. Yeah. I still, I still, I'm so thankful uh, for, for your attitude uh, on that because, man, we could have yeah, no really, we really could have stuck our foot in that one. Uh, next up on my murderer's row is Mike Belcher, who gets the other tie for our favorite accent on the stream. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I represent, uh, hi, I'm Mike. I'm a letterer and production designer, and I also create my own book, Man the Mask. That's right, which is awesome, and they can find it where? At uh, Indie Planet. Uh, just look up AMK Comics, and you can also see uh, my webcomic that I've just started at That's right. amkcomics.com. That's kind of what I was shooting for there. Yeah. And, right, and for those, what's that? Then I'll go with whichever, whichever one. <laughs> and for those of you who don't know, uh, Mike's, Mike's the one who, who created this cool, sharp-looking uh, banner at the top of the um, all of the uh, Silverline books. So, uh, yeah, I, and which I, I, I like quite a bit. Uh, and then last but not least is Becca. Hi guys, I'm Rebecca Winslow. I am the colorist for Friar Rush. Did I say that right? You did? Yes, you did. <laughs> uh, it's been a long day. Um, I'm also the colorist for Marauder. Yes. You got down you right, that right. Too. <laughs> <laughs> two. Two, two, keep going. <laughs> Yes, yes. And I am the anchor for something big, which is the name of the comic. <laughs> Not a secret. <laughs> That's right. Sweet. You're batting a thousand, Becca. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> She's like, yes, an analogy I know too. Woo. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And, and behind the scenes, uh, we have uh, my son, Brett Mann who is running all the uh, production stuff. He's putting up the images and, and making sure we're connected uh, where we're supposed to be. And I'm gonna try to uh, get up here on the stream as well. Uh, I've been trying to do this, uh, the chat, I should say. I've been trying to do this the last couple of times and it seems to be working okay. So I'm gonna say, hello, Oven. What's up, we uh, Wubba? Wubba. What's up, Wubba? And hey, Eric, how y'all doing? uh hopefully you guys can chime in too a little bit about music because that's what we're going to uh, be talking about tonight so I, I, you know the, before we talk about the music that we listen to because um i think we it's always important to put things in perspective so what i want to do is we'll just uh, we'll just go around around the clock here um and talk about your background so for instance um I was raised in a house that listened to a lot of country music. Uh, my mom and dad were a um, uh, country music fan. My mom was an Elvis fan. Um, so we, we listened to, uh, and when I say country, I mean like legit country, not like, not like the modern country that sounds kind of like pop rock. Um, I'm talking like the Hank Williams and the, oh, what's that dude that sang? Uh, Johnny Horton and stuff like that. So uh, my, what's that? Charlie Pride. Yeah, that my dad exact, loved Charlie that, Pride. Exactly that, right? And that's the kind. I mean, we watched um, uh, Hee Haw every Saturday night. Every Saturday night, that was a family thing. We watched Hee Haw, and my parents uh, cooked us. Uh, my parents uh, fried chicken uh, every Saturday night, and we watched Hee Haw. Um, that was just you know, that was kind of what we did. Um, and I hated country music. <laughs> I hated country music, right? Um, so as I got to forming my own opinions and 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 got into my you know teen years, I started listening to um, the radio. Of course, uh, I found a radio station where I lived that played album rock, and I was never a pop guy. And, and in fact, I'm going to do my my best not to go off on on pop music tonight because I, I, I don't like it. Um, and there's not very many good things I can say about most popular music um so i said i'm going to focus on the things that i that i like and so i discovered bands like queen and aerosmith and led zeppelin they were playing this on this album rock they were playing 
that's what they would do. They just put an out, you know, hey, this is side B of uh, of Queen's Night at the Opera. <laughs> okay, right? And then they would just play the entire album. Um, unfortunately, they they disappeared about the time I was a senior. Um, but that's kind of my that's kind of my music background. So so I think, and I say all this to say I think that we kind of need that for us to kind of say, okay, where did you come from? Where'd you go, Nigel? Jo- no, sorry. Uh, mm-hmm. So where'd you come from with your music, and then how is it? What what are you doing today? So that was me. Um, who wants to go next? Uh, I'll, I mean, go yeah, ahead. go ahead, Becca. I, go Becca. I can go. Um, I kind of grew up with a lot of rock music. My dad was in a in a band when I was a kid, so I got to go to all of his shows. Um, I didn't actually know that there's any other music outside of his until I was mm-hmm. like five or six. Uh, but yeah, I listened to a lot of classic rock growing up. My mom was a huge Grateful Dead fan. So a lot of Aerosmith, Metallica, Meatloaf, all that. Um, when I moved to Bergenfield in high school, they had a huge music, uh, program there. And every single one of my friends were in garage bands. So it was a lot of heavy metal and ska and uh, all different types of music so my playlist is really random i listen to a lot of uh, irish punk music and ska mostly because of that (laughs) in classic rock so what what, are you saying ska ska Ska. s-k-a yeah like uh mighty mighty boston's a lot of trumpets oh (laughs) okay yeah I'm i'm gonna have to look that one up (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not aware of that. Okay, really cool. Very cool. All right, who's next? I'll go next. Um, I was, I'm probably one of the older or the oldest one here in the group. Um, so I was raised, my, my parents really didn't listen to a lot of music. When my dad did, it was country. Um, but I was raised in uh, the 60s and graduated in 1977. So I was there right there when all the really, really great classic rock was happening, uh, the Summer of Love and all that stuff. So, you know, I was raised on Deep Purple, Cream, Jefferson Airplane, Rolling Stone, Beatles, uh, uh, groups like that. My brother, my older brother introduced me into the, into the world of rock and roll. So I was, I'm very, very much uh, an old fashioned rock and roll chick. Um, Although I've evolved as I've gone along and my son uh, in, introduced me to a lot of metal bands and I actually like Metallica is my all time favorite band. So I'm, I'm a 61 year old Metallica fan, <laughs> uh, Guns N' Roses and Very cool. um, uh, Disturbed. I think there's a Disturbed version of um, Sound uh, of Silence. Sound of Silence is Ooh. the best version that's ever been made it just raises chills uh, on my spine when i hear that I, that's yeah. the, I heard that song for the first time this week i know uh-huh. sound of silence but the disturbed version because oh. my mom, mom's been playing it non-stop <laughs> <She's> just, <laughs> doesn't it just make the hair stand up on your yeah. on your it's arms? a great song but yeah, yeah it's done really well yes yeah. Yeah, and i like up. when i'm when i'm creating i have all kinds of playlists I wait, wait, wait 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 not oh, okay. to the playlist yet. Okay. <laughs> I have I have um I have playlists depending on on my mood, which is blues playlists. Yeah. I have uh, um fast and fun. I've got uh, melancholy um, playlists, but those right. those aren't aren't for creating. <laughs> those are for other things. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so who else? Your 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 music learning music back I, you know i'd have yeah. to say like uh let me see here we do have a lesson to a lot of music and I, I, mostly i guess rock or whatever you know i got in the queen um strange enough i'd have to probably say my first big musical thing was like saturday morning cartoon theme songs <laughs> yeah. as music as a kid like that like you know like if you would have asked me like what's your favorite it's like well theme song of thundercats let's not be stupid and um but you know it's more than i started getting into bands and stuff and then you know i got in the metal and heavy metal and then but then i go opposite i was i'm a big fan of phil collins and then i I like a lot of celtic music and stuff and lately 
I have fallen out of the American metal scene and I have discovered the European international metal scene. It's huge. Which just took heavy metal from America and just took it into the stratosphere. I yeah. mean, the, and I had nothing against American musicians, but when you hear some of the bands overseas, oh, wow, yeah. yeah. <laughs> they're, yeah. they're really talented. Well, Do you yeah, like you Ramstein? Know. What? Do you like Ramstein? Not as much, but I can tell you a whole bunch of other bands that that I like. Rammstein is good. Uh, well, we'll get to naming bands. I think that's yeah, yeah later. later. <laughs> that's later. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, very cool. Uh, who's next? Somebody jump in. I'll go next. Okay. Okay. Uh, typically, the stuff my dad listened to was the stuff I didn't want to listen to. Uh, you know, the uh, What About Bob little phrase about there's two people in the world those who like neil diamond and those who don't <laughs> yeah because of that my dad would that was a non-stop cassette that let's just put it this way mysteriously disappeared <laughs> <laughs> more, more than <laughs> once more than once uh, uh, but you know it, it made me start appreciating other music because it really drove me away from that type of music <laughs> and, uh, yeah i metalhead you know hard rock and uh punk i, I really got into punk wow uh, but as, as like, i got like old, punk like black flag and ramones and, really you know, okay festivals. oh yeah yeah i got the whole gamut so wow, yeah cool. uh, but you know i go i i also kind of gravitated towards storytellers but you know i can also listen to you know bob dylan and and really johnny cash as i've gotten older i i, I probably listen to more johnny cash Wow, interesting. Oh, I, you know, it's a very, very little bit of uh, music as, as I've kind of accumulated over the years. Yeah, that's very cool. I, I you know, I, I, I gotta be honest, Mike, I would not have pictured you as a, uh, as a, a punk. <laughs> I, you know, I, I may not have been in the crowd, but I, you know, I, I certainly appreciate the music. I, you know, some days you just have one of those days where you just, you know, the heck with everybody. And, you know, that's the kind of music you want to listen to. Yeah. Just kind of angry and, and just kind of noisy and just, yeah. Well, Mike's always looked like a troublemaker to me. I mean, just look exactly. at the guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't have thought I'd be, you know, a uh, mosh pit in the 90s, but I was, believe it or not. So. All right. So, Curtis, did you talk? Did you say it? Yeah. Uh, no, no, tell yeah. Us, so, tell um, us. so, so my my parents' background was um, the music that I kind of grew up listening to around them was um, maybe like sometimes like folk music, like Jim Croce and stuff like that. Oh, you yeah. know, which at the person. time I I didn't like, but now I think it's amazing. You know, um, and kind of soft rock and things like that. Um, and then I had when it was when a teenager, I basically was trying to find my musical identity. You know, when you're in school, so it's like, well, what am I going to be? What am I going to dress like? What am I going to listen to? So at first I thought metal was going to be my bag. So I remember I had a friend lend me every cassette from uh, of Metallica up to that point, And I just went on like this binge of Metallica. But unfortunately, it wasn't, wasn't quite my bag, you know. <laughs> so what ended up being kind of my niche is I actually really like, um, I like all types of music, but really I like uh, hip hop and rap ended up being my thing. During wow. The early 90s, late 80s. And, um, and specifically that, that genre because of the, the political content, the storytelling, there was a certain depth, which is kind of funny looking back, that kind of ties back to the folk music, I guess. My parents had the social commentary, which only now I see that. So my main bag is that, like I like um, DMX, Nas. Um, I like other things, like I like uh, Faith No More, which is not hip hop, I like the Rolling Stones. Wow. Uh, and uh, Rolling got me into uh, Dio. I like I like Sabbath, <laughs> yeah. but Ro yeah. Roland Roland said you got to know about the other side of Sabbath. It's called Dio. It's Dio. He, said, oh, it's got, he talks about dragons and fire and and uh, so thanks to Roland, I got into Deep Purple and um, the Dio part of uh, right. Sabbath. So I remember Roland Roland influenced me there. So so yeah, it's kind of kind of all over the place. I think the funny thing is sometimes my dad got into my car when I was in high school and he was listening to my mixtape and it was just insane. It was like. <laughs> really hard gangster rap and then it switched to Enya <laughs> and then it switched to ACDC and he was like who is this kid? Like, it's the are you weirdest. mixed up? <laughs> well the way I always say it is my ethnic background is I'm Japanese, Irish and English so you show me what a Japanese, Irish, English person is supposed to act like and I'll follow that but I've had to kind of navigate that 100% on my yeah. own. <laughs> <laughs> That's my yeah. 
<laughs> and you're sticking to it, right? <laughs> yeah, I, I'm sticking to it. Sticking to it. <laughs> so the only one that didn't talk was Pete, right? Yeah, I mean, I mean, you know, I, and you know, probably you really, you're, you're across the pond, so we know the all oh, you listen to is the Beatles, <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding, Pete. Go ahead. Probably, probably I think it's about the only thing I don't listen to. <laughs> I don't know. Music was never really a big thing when I was growing up. Right, my parents weren't really particularly musical, um, so I just sort of listened to what was ever on the radio and. When I was, I guess, of that age, we had this thing in the in the UK called garage music, which was uh, like dance music, sort of crossed with hip hop and all sorts of things, which was really popular when I was, you know, like 18, 19. Um, but I listened, I, I listened to literally anything from, I don't know, AC, DC through to Adele and literally there's there's nothing i don't don't listen mm. to perhaps perhaps you guys have this uh real heavy heavy metal thing which i discovered when i was over there yeah I, that, that's that's odd, odd enough there was a band i came across called five finger death punch oh yeah yeah, yeah. hey <laughs> they really cool because <laughs> yeah. yeah. so, when i was working in the city i was working with this this guy, older guy he must be in his late 40s early 50s and we were just discussing one day and said what sort of music are you into and i was like oh this and this and so what about you he said i really like this band called five finger death punch and he was the whitest most middle class guy i was like what on earth is that? <laughs> what kind of name is that right <laughs> what are you listening to? what sort of guy are you? What, what person are you and then, and I, then in, a few years later I, they, I came across one of their tracks on on or something and i was like oh, this is they're pretty good they're not if, they're, what I if they're within 200 miles, my daughter and, and her fiance go to their concerts all the time. Really? Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, they're all right. But um, no, I listen to anything. I'm really into a guy called Jerry Cinnamon at the moment. He's a Scottish guy. And uh, if you get a chance to listen to, listen to some of his music, it's, it's really cool. Because it, uh, it's stuff that sort of tells a story. Yeah. Things about where he's come from and the life he's had. And uh, that's why I like rap music. Rap music that talks about their life before they made their money mm. that's what's interesting yeah not not once they've made the money and they got the house and yeah. they've got very little left to sing about <laughs> um but that sort of stuff it's really interesting because that's stuff i've not experienced as a life i've not i can't experience so yeah uh, yeah that's, that's yeah anything well, basically and i and i have to say that that uh, you know um i'm not sure admire is the right word uh, but maybe, but I, I do, because I am very much not broad in my musical taste. Mm. I, I am not. Uh, and, and, you know, people have tried, well, why don't you? And like, no, 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 I really don't care. I, I don't like it. I don't want to listen to it. I, I, this is what I like. I know what I like. This is what I want. And I, and I just, I don't like anything else. Uh, so people like you who can listen to a, a, a broad spectrum, you know, I kind of have a, an appreciation for it because it's like, yeah, I'm sorry, I can't. You turn the top forty radio on, and I just, I, I, I start getting violently ill. Um, no, no. <laughs> you know? I did think it was interesting that he was talking about we came to America and heavy metal. I'm like, yeah, but so much metal came from Europe, like Iron Maiden and stuff. Oh yeah. So Good you stuff. guys actually Scorpions? gave us a lot of that stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Your country, England, and stuff. So yeah. Well, I, I think probably it has to do, you know, a lot of metal is, uh, or, you know, the roots of metal, of course, are in, yeah. in, in, in blues and rock. And there's very much the whole the whole rebellious attitude. Exactly. Which, if that's not America, what is? You know, I know. Right? I know. I, it I mean, connects with us. You know, that we're, all, we're all about, yeah, sorry. You can't tell me what to do. America's still, America's still the, uh, the young, spoiled brat of a country, right? Sorry, you can't tell us what to do. We're, we're a country. Ah, yeah. Nah, right? <laughs> Um, so the other thing, which my son just reminded me of, we get into one of the other things that I discovered, um, and of course I, I probably post link, links and stuff, is really weird music. Okay, when I say really weird music, I mean stuff, that's funny stuff, like like uh, Doctor Demento. Okay, Doctor Demento was a disc jockey. Um, it probably goes back to the fifties, and he just played really weird songs. You, it, Pete, I saw you make somebody. Do you know who Doctor Demento is? Okay, so so Doctor Demento yeah. is just a disc jockey, okay? Um, but he played, and, and you've probably heard some of the, the tunes he's played. He's played things like um, uh, Ray uh, Ray Stevens, 
uh, the streak. He played uh, Weird Al Yankovic, any, anything mm. by Weird Al Yankovic, right? But there's lots of really, really weird, strange songs like that that I just, for some reason, have a fascination for. There's a song called, you know, Dead Puppies, um, which is just as funny as can be, right? You think, <laughs> how could a song called Dead Puppies be? Anybody heard of Dead Puppies? No, no. I think that's when we lost the YouTube Oh, Barbhead, <laughs> woo -hoo! Yeah. Uh, it oh, sounds no, like no. something I would like. <laughs> Oh, oh, Becky, you would. It's it's so funny. <laughs> it's just like uh, dead puppies aren't much fun. <laughs> it's like they don't come when you call them, right? Uh, anyway, it's just it's it's Doctor Demento is just, uh, uh, and it's not like a certain style of music. So it's like not it's not like rock or or right. hip hop or it's just it's just weird songs. Um, see, I, I I discovered that, and and the thing, the way I had to listen to Doctor Demento, he came on. I want to say uh, 10, 1030 on like a Sunday night and I had to sneak out to my the shed right where my dad had my dad kept the radio out in the shed and I would have to sneak out of my house and sit in the shed and was surrounded by you know tools and smelly stuff and just sit there and listen to Dr. Demento for an hour and sneak back in into my house that was the only way I could listen to Dr. Demento and probably my favorite song at the time was a song called they're coming to take me away Oh, right. Yes, yes. I know that one too. Yeah, oh, yeah, which you know, a lot of people have heard that one. As a, yeah, I used to go around, and my parents had heard that one too. And then my mom was like, "How do you know that song?" I'm like, "I heard it on the radio," <laughs> which is true. <laughs> it's completely true, right? I just didn't say I heard it on the radio when I snuck out to the shed. Um, okay, so you know, I think all this is kind of important. Um, like I said earlier, it's just, it's just kind of because we're we're going to talk about the things that we listen to as we create, and I think. I think our backgrounds influence some of what we do. So uh, before we get to still our list, Barb, I know you're itching. I know you're itching. <laughs> let's, let's talk about, um, do you think it's, uh, how, how important is listening to music to you while you create? And then maybe a, a, a part two of that is, do you think it should be important for others? Someone take that. Um, I guess I'll start. Uh, I don't necessarily need to listen to music while I work. I just need noise. Um, I'm not used to not being in like a working, like having other people around me. I'm used to that. So being alone, I like the voices and the company that kind of like push me forward. But I feel like everybody is different in how they work. I, I don't think it I can say it's important for other people to do it. I just know what works for me and I stick to that. Yeah. Um, uh, by the way, Barb, uh, Paul Carter says, hey, Barb. He says, uh, when you're evil is my fave, which is probably, I don't know that one, but that's probably a Dr. Demento uh, song because Harrenberg mentioned, listed off a couple of really good ones. Um, so yeah. Paul is an ElfQuest fan. Oh, very cool. Yeah. Hopefully, he's about to be a Divinity fan. I hope so. Yep. All right, I'll so, go next. Okay. Um, you know, I have friends, um, especially uh, my cousin, Terry Beatty. They like to listen. They like to have TV on or have old movies or TV hang, shows. Hang on, hang on, Barb. T t time out. So I, I just noticed a stream, and we're not sharing any art. So, uh, Becca, are you arting? Arting. You, you arting? Okay. Mm -hmm. Becca, Becca, toss your stuff up there. Let's get okay. your stuff on the screen. Sorry, I just happened to notice that. We've been 30 minutes and I'm just now noticing that there's no art on the screen. Brett, you're, that's that's your job, buddy. You're supposed to tell me, hey, is anybody going to share? All right, yeah. so they take care of that. Barb, you get back to Yeah, I'm sorry for interrupting you. Well, oh, that's fine. Um, every person has to kind of decide what their most... Um, comfortable with or what they're inspired to do, um, whether they have to have complete silence. It's like I know some writers have to have complete silence or it's distracting. Um, some artists like to watch TV or old movies um, while they're creating. Um, I only listen to music some of the time when I'm creating. Most of the time I listen to audiobooks because my brain runs too fast. I can't doing art isn't enough to keep it fully occupied so i have to listen to uh, books on tape as i ink yeah somebody else oh yeah, done? I, okay 
<laughs> Go for it, Aaron. Are we all going to have to start pe- uh, speaking with punctuation? And I'm going yeah, yeah. to do that when I ink. Period. Period. <laughs> um, yeah, when I um, I you know it's funny. I do listen to some music. The thing is, I'm I'm very much an album. I listen to albums instead of just like random music. And sometimes why that backfires on me is. I get caught up in my work and I realize I'm on like the third go around of the album. So I have to like, okay, I have to check it. Um, so I'm like, Barbara, I listen to um, some podcasts. I listen to videos on YouTube. Uh, there's a, a guy uh, who talks about comics, news and stuff. So I listen to that uh, audio stuff, but uh, I don't know. I, I, and I'm pretty eclectic too. I mean, lately I think I've been, when I've been working, I've been listening to the soundtrack of Xanadu. Because I'm a big Olivia Newton John fan. So, like, okay. so, like, again, I'm all over. I'm just like, that totally works. Yeah. So, it's just kind of all over. And I mean, I think music can definitely help, depends on what you're doing art wise. Um, but I think it could definitely, I mean, to me, it helps sometimes set the mood yeah. or get it in there. So, yeah. Cool. Curtis? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm, I, I kind of, echo the sentiments of uh barb and aaron i mean i i actually have like a specific category of netflix shows that i can watch where i, I kind of pay attention but i don't fully pay attention so there's a, a certain movies or tv shows like that um but music i think is important i mean i kind of feel like as i'm listening to music when i'm drawing or what have you it's almost like a, the soundtrack to what's on the yeah. paper you know yeah. and i remember there was this really cool manga years ago that the guy actually put the soundtrack in the caption so you'd read it and it'd say like okay play this song at, at this panel here and then the next page you know well, that's so, kind of cool so it, was kind of, that's yeah. kind of a, it was kind of a cool idea you know but i i kind of feel like you're kind of composing the, the soundtrack and in the back of my mind i have that that kind of that kind of playlist so for me it's, it's um that uh soundtracks themselves like orchestral stuff is good because you don't really have to focus too much on the lyrics but i do listen to podcasts and audiobooks because yeah kind of multitasking i get to absorb your information you know while i'm drawing oh absolutely kind of yeah yeah royal royal airship says i can do any kind of work when listening to gaelic storm and uh wubba fett says music is life when i'm drawing need it to help slip into the zone oh yeah yeah uh, I, I can't i can't listen to i can't have anything on i can't listen to if i'm it, it depends what stage i'm at if i'm doing layouts and roughs then uh, I need I need complete silence because really? I, I have to really concentrate on the layouts of the, of the most difficult stage for me. Yeah. Um, so I need to really uh, concentrate. Once I start penciling, then yeah, I'll have some music on, uh, inking, probably the same. I don't tend to put a TV on because I find that distracts me from, I have to watch it. I yeah. might, I might yeah. have the Simpsons on in the background because I've seen them 4,000 times <laughs> each. Yeah. But I don't yeah. need to watch it. But yeah, I'll, um, once I'm penciling and then, you know, I'll, I'll put a play track on or, I listen to um, I listen to the Michael Rosenbaum podcast. The guy who played Lex Luthor in Smallville. Sure, I've re- I know the name. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he has a really good podcast. He gets what, uh, what he, he has talk- a good. <laughs> he What's talk- he talk he, about? Um, he gets different uh, actors and producers and oh, cool people on. He, he basically talks to them and he they he talk about mental health quite a lot. Oh wow, that's cool. I think he has his own mental health things he he ah. works on. Um, but yeah, no, that's really cool. Um, and he gets all the all the Smallville. I, I love Smallville. I grew yeah, up. Smallville. So I he gets everyone on, and they they do their they chat about that. Um, but yeah, so why or, is it? Or, or um, you know, film soundtracks. Oh yeah. So the best ones are like Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit. I can just I, I put those on, and that's cool. Yeah, yeah. So why is it you think that um, uh, the, the the music distracts you when you you said you need the quiet? What is yeah. it that it? What is it? How, I guess what I'm fishing for is maybe how does it distract you? What, what do you find yourself doing if you happen to, um, you, you, you find yourself playing air guitar or? <laughs> <laughs> I definitely don't. <laughs> don't do that. Um, no, I, I don't know. It's just. Um, it's just your brain. Off, yeah, my, yeah. I'm not a hundred percent focused on, yeah. on trying to figure out the story, how the story will flow through the page. I say it's only really it's only the the layouts and and the rough stage. Sure. Um, where you need your brain. Yeah, where I need to focus on yeah. on what I'm doing. How, how I don't I don't know how people do it when they have the music on off it's blaring. Up. <laughs> but um, yeah. you know, it's hard enough when I'm I've got family around. 
I'm yeah. going to concentrate on my yeah. own thing. But, so, uh, all right. Well, that's actually an interesting question. So if you're trying to do, uh, if you're trying to do layouts and you have family around, how do you, how do you block that out? Do you block it out with white, no with white noise maybe? Um, uh, yeah, sometimes. Or, so, yeah. Actually, so, I yeah, wonder if that's uh, racist well, in today, today's. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it's just it's no. white noise, right? You know, you know what I'm talking about. The, yeah, just a, yeah, just yeah. having. I, uh, I just, I have no choice. I just got to get my head down and try and. Okay, I got you. So, yeah. So you can't block out that noise with another. I don't have. I, I can't. I, at the moment, I don't have my own room to, to work in, so I have to uh -huh. work in like like uh, I'm working at the the living room, the back of the room. Yeah. Which, during the day, when it, once everyone goes back to work, it's fine yeah. because everyone's working from home at the moment. Right, different people in different rooms doing doing this basically for <laughs> yeah. their work. So um, it's usually quite quiet, but you still got people talking in the background, and yeah, um, yeah. you just have to get on with it. So that's that's life for the moment. It is. It is. Uh, hello, uh, T Josh on uh, Twitch. How you doing? Uh, we're talking about uh, music and creating today. Uh, I think the only one who had to address this question is uh, Mike. Mike. He Absolute tonight. silence when I write, but when I draw, it's the, the, the pencil is like uh, the arm on a record player. The music has to start. <laughs> okay. but, I, but I have to concentrate when I write. I, I have to have absolute silence, no fans, no TV, nothing. I have to sit there and it's just me and the, the keyboard trying to figure things out. But uh, I can't draw, uh, you know, a smiley face without music. <laughs> uh, it, it really sets the tone for me. It, it's kind of just, like I said, it's like a record player. You just, as soon as you put it down, it just, I have to have it always yeah. keeps me, it actually keeps me focused on the page. It, it keeps me, because if I turn it off, I find myself meandering out the room. Mm -hmm. So it actually keeps me going. Cool. So after you're done writing, you throw on Neil Diamond to get the artwork done. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I really need to have some good emotion going on towards something I really hate. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. I want I want to see a comic drawn by him with Neil Diamond in the background. I want to see that. <laughs> a lot of dark lines, a lot of fake lines. It, it it probably wouldn't be very happy, but you know, I, I'll give it a try once. A little twenty-four hour comic or something. Yeah, I'll have to. I think about doing like that. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, okay, so before I move on to the next question, uh, Paul has a question that's a little bit off topic, but uh, certainly it's the topic of a uh, topic for tonight. Certainly it's the topic of, of comics. Uh, so I want to maybe touch on it just a little bit, but let's don't dwell there whole long, he, uh, a long time. He says, uh, so what effect do you guys think DC leaving Diamond will, ha Diamond will have on the industry as a whole? Um, anybody, get, like I said, let's don't, because we could probably sit and spin here for a long time. Um, but let's just kind of, anybody want to briefly toss in some comments? Wow, that's a, that's, yeah, that's an entire, entire stream topic. It is, question. I know. <laughs> wow. Um, I, I think if But anything, it was a question asked and I don't want yeah, to ignore yeah, it. Yeah, definitely. So, you know. I mean, to me, I would think it would hopefully be better for the industry to actually break the monopoly a little bit. Yeah. Um, that's my viewpoint. Um, I know some of the other background of why it's bad, but I just see it as like, no, I can see that going good. And I mean, if it doesn't work out, I'm sure Diamond would take DC back or something. I mean, I don't think it's like that, you know, no, we will never talk to them again. Um, it's either yeah. going to be a fantastic experiment that works and helps to yeah. broaden the marketplace with other companies, or it's going to be a spectacular failure. And it's just yeah. going to take time to find out. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I tend to sort of be in, in agreement with that. Those general ideas. I think that um, uh, Diamond has had a, a and you know, I, I don't say this out of anger for Diamond because yeah. they were the last man standing. So it's not yeah. like it's not like Diamond set out to destroy the world, <laughs> destroy the distribution world. It's just that they were the last man standing in the in the in the nineties, right? So, um, but I, I do think it's been a problem. Has, has certainly developed into a problem because they're, they're the only outlet to comic shops and so i, I just think I, I think competition for diamond is a good thing um i mean they I set first, the rules Bob, right now yeah and barb you probably remember this too i mean when i first got into comics there were at least a dozen distributors well i live uh, here in madison wisconsin and you know that's capital, capital city. city distribution yep. i knew the owners i would go to all their shows no yeah. grief john davis yep they are awesome awesome yep. people yeah, I really I, miss 
I do too. I miss Cap City. Uh, in fact, I was going through some pictures the other day for my, for the Throwback Thursdays. So y'all send me pictures if you don't have them, uh, if you haven't already. Uh, and and I found one at a Cap City show that 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 uh, that I did in in New Orleans. So uh, yeah, I, I miss Cap City. Uh, Wubba says unless the other distributors becomes more inclusive to indies and other companies, he doesn't see it making a dent really. And I guess that's possible if they if these guys if these other if these new distributors are are DC only, then I mean really what have we gained except just a, a, a secondary outlet for DC? Yeah, an exclusive if it's not an, outlet. Exclusive yes. outlet. Yeah. If yeah. it's not so, another option for independence to go to these, yeah, I don't see the big impact it's going to have. Yeah. So. Yeah. So I, 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 yeah, I think that um, it, I think it has the potential to be really good uh, and, and and creating some more uh, some more competition, but it's you know it's kind of, we're kind of all kind of on that. Let's wait and see what happens. Um, okay. So back to music. So. Um, several things popped up here, uh, and, and you guys talking about this thing. Um, what, what about, let's talk about the differences briefly before we kind of get to some of our specifics, uh, podcast and music, right? These are, these are two different things and then podcast and music and then instrumentals, right? Uh, they're all kind of, they all kind of a little bit different. Um, who wants to talk about some of the differences of those, uh, as it affects you? It depends on how much in. attention you want to pay. Yeah. <laughs> if you're if you're like you just want some of the background music, um, you know, I've got a whole playlist of sound soundtracks, movie soundtracks, and it's just yeah. that's instrumentals, and it's just easy to have it on in the background while you're concentrating. But if you're doing something that's that um, doesn't require your entire focus, then a podcast or an audio book is perfect. Mm. Okay. Yeah. The podcasts yeah, so, are so. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, go ahead. That's all right. Cool. Uh, it's like podcasts are so new. Uh, I mean, even I mean, I haven't started listening to podcasts in the last few years. There was always music, or and the the, the TV I would watch would be like old eighty sitcoms like Cheers or Family Ties or oh, whatever because I've good, seen yeah. them, and you could just throw them in the background and you to watch them, and you could just you know pay attention. But you know, getting into podcasts, um, sometimes they work for me, and sometimes. I lose track of what they're saying. And then pretty soon I'm like, I don't know what they're talking about. And I'll click it back to music. So I, even when I'm drawing, I'll lose track of what they're talking about. I'm like, I don't know. So yeah, I'm still getting used to listening to podcasts. So it's mostly TVs or stories or music and stuff. I do listen to some soundtracks with no words, but most of my stuff have words in them when I listen to them. So. Yeah. Um, about the distribution, Harrenberg said uh, two different new comic book days e each week brings more people into the stores. And then also uh, we're going to see what Alterna can do because I don't know if y'all know this, Alterna is starting their own Alterna mm. distribution. So oh, yeah, so if we've got uh, uh, more than one new comic book day a week, it bank brings uh, more people into the store. That's, a, that's an interesting thought. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and Eric Eric Dotson says it's a little hard to ink while I'm banging my head listening to metal. Mm -hmm. uh, Tommy says, "Hey guys, hope all's well." Tommy, woohoo! Hey, Tom. uh, Tommy. Uh, Wubba says, "Silver Line should be the first. Give it a try, an indie try with the other distributions, uh, uh, distributors." And I will say this, uh, Wubba, once we reach that point, absolutely, we are going to reach out to to. Anyone who will carry our comics, so uh, and and you can uh, you can bet I have it bookmarked on my uh, my browser the news announcement uh, for those two new distribution uh, places and and someone said that they they had heard there was a third one coming up. Uh, I haven't got the information on that, but um, it'd but be it great because we're growing hand over fist. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah I, I think so. Uh, and Royal Airship says, uh, could podcasts be the AM radio of the future? Well, that's kind of interesting. Uh, yeah, that's, that's I can see that. Thought. Yeah. Uh, all right. So who else wants to chime in? Podcast, music? Yeah. Pod yeah. Podcast. Podcast is something I, I choose to listen to. So it depends who's on it. So I will, I will tend to listen to the podcast when I know I can go slowly on my work. I don't, I'm yeah. not rushed to do it because I can stop and listen to what's going on. Whereas the music, I just tend to press shuffle and what plays plays. It's no, it's no biggie. Um, so yeah, the 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 difference is why whether I choose to listen to it or not. 
I think. Yeah. Yeah, I kind of think it, it it has to do you know lots to do with energy. It's like you know because I have that that martial arts background. It's like there's a lot of interesting things that dovetail into art and creation stuff like that. And that idea of like nowadays people say food is medicine. Well, like music is energy. Like vibration is mm. energy. You know, and even in the not to go too far off, but even like the martial arts I do, the the highest level set of techniques has to do with tones that you create because the tones create vibrations which affect your inner organ. And if anybody's done singing, they know about putting tones in different parts of their body, you know. So I kind of I kind of treat music like that. If I if I'm tired and I need to kind of be ramped up, I'll listen to something kind of like like hip hop or something kind of strong. If I need to kind of zone out, something more instrumental, you know. So I kind of treat it as a supplement to whatever I'm trying to do, you know. And, and it's just it's cool, you know. With, with digital content, there's just so many options. It's, it's amazing yeah. nowadays, you know. Yeah, it is amazing the options that we have. Yes. <laughs> Sorry, I just zoned out. Uh, that's okay. <laughs> Anybody else? Um, I I listen to podcasts. Uh, I, I also listen to a lot of stand up. So I listen to stand up. <laughs> yeah, like comedians. I listen to podcasts from yeah, uh, yeah, by comedians. And if I'm getting sick and tired of just like only listening listening to music, I'll switch it up with either stand up or podcasts that are humorous yeah yeah so when you so when you listen to stand-ups don't you do you find that that's distracting because um and i'm asking because i, I don't watch I, it i kind of oh, like yeah. put it but, on in the background but don't you miss some of the some of the comedy that because i find stand-up comedians fun to watch but but some of what is uh attractive to me about stand-up comedians is their facial expressions and their the things they do with their body language right i i grew up on stand-up comedy and watching it and okay. i got really big into it so there's not that many new ones i haven't seen yet because the okay. second it comes out i watch it so i i yeah. i'm like re-watching old stand-up i've mm. seen a thousand now, do you, times do you do, do you do stand-up comedy me yeah Oh God, no! I have <laughs> horrible stage fright. Are you kidding? No, 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 no. Uh, I probably fall off the stage. Like, come on. <laughs> but that's all part of your act, right, Becca? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, classy Becca just falls off stage. <laughs> uh, hey, Dempsey, what's up? Uh, Dipsy is a, a former student of, of uh, mine at from Full Sail, and he says, he says, uh, what's up, party people? Uh, hey. uh, uh, Tommy says he can watch TV while he works, no problem. Can you tell? Yeah, because he's watching us right now. Hey, Tommy. Uh, okay. Ehrenberg says, favorite instrumental band is Shadowy Men on a Shadowy, on a shadowy Planet, and did the kids, kids in the Hall theme song, so. <laughs> yes uh anybody else want to address uh podcasts music music lyrics yeah my only thoughts about it is um i, I really can't listen to to, to podcast i mean obviously most of what not being uh not being an artist uh most of what well, 90 percent of what i do requires me to be able to focus and i can't focus if i'm listening to a podcast um mm -hmm because my brain is focused on what they're saying and not on what I'm trying to type or read. I can't read and listen to, uh, to a podcast. Um, and I can't, certainly can't write and listen to a podcast. On the, on the odd chances I'm doing some art stuff like fixing the PDFs for print or you know, cleaning up some of the artwork, prepping them for, for uh, colors, particularly some of the older black and white stuff that I prep for, for Barb or Becca. Um, then I can I can listen to to something with words, but for the most part, no. Um, okay, so now let's talk about hey, Cassisi, what's going on? Y'all, Cassisi is another former student of mine, and um, he he's got a, a cool rock and pro, uh, comic project that I think he said he just sent to uh, Kablam. So anxious to see that. Uh, Becca Wubba says, "Have you heard Joe Coy yet?" Oh, of course. Yeah. I love Joe Coy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. He's great. Uh, okay. So let's talk about, uh, let's, let's talk about some specific music now. 
So you sit down at your table to create something. Tell me what you're creating, right? So that we can kind of be in the mind what what you're doing or inking or as Pete said, you're doing layouts or pencils or whatever. Tell me what you're doing and then tell me what you're listening to. Tell me a couple of things. And if you've got some playlists um, prepped, let me know or maybe text, send those to me on in uh, the, our Facebook chat and I'll post those to, um, to the streams so that people can go listen to those playlists as we're talking about. Yes, who wants, who wants to go first? Don't everyone oh, jump in okay, at the same I'll time. Okay, I'll go first. I'll go first. <laughs> All right. Um, well, like I said before, about 75% of the time I listen to books on tape, and those are biographies or um, high fantasy. But when I do listen to music, um, depends on what the mood is or the mood of the book. Um, I'm usually inking or coloring. Um, if if I'm, I have several playlists, I have an alternative playlist, which is alternative music. I have blues. I have fast and fun songs. Um, I have melancholy. I have soft and slow, mm -hmm. and I have soundtracks. But the one that I listen to the most is called Grit and Grind. That's my. That's what I call it. <laughs> so, I, do you have yeah. a link for that? Is this a, is this like a private personal? Well, playlist? it's on my. It's on my. Um, it's a playlist on my. Uh, Spotify. No, unfortunately, oh. it's not online. Uh, it's just. Uh, songs that I've collected and a lot of the songs I've collected are from TV shows. I'll be watching a TV show and they'll play a particular song. I love it. And I'll have to go online to uh, Toon Find and, mm -hmm. and look for it. And a lot of my, I have found um, were from Lucifer mm. or Blacklist. Yeah. That, cool. Lucifer has a ton of great show yes. uh, music. Yeah, it does. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the music, why I call it grit and grind is it's, they're, they're, it's all a little dark and gritty. Um, I especially like songs from uh, Blues Sarceno is one of the bands that I like. Um, Mumford and Sons, mm -hmm. Florence and the Machine, mm -hmm. Guns and Roses and Metallica, obviously Metallica, um, Kaleo, ACDC, um, El King, Audio Slave. And of course, this is like, he's quintessential across the board everybody loves him johnny cash mm -hmm. uh, yep yep so those are and I, there's a lot a lot of them i have like um 144 songs in my grit and grind list but but the, a lot of them come from those bands and again i usually just run across them by accident by there'll be a tv show on and it'll have a really intense scene and um the music that they're playing on the back in the background will catch my attention and like I gotta find that song and I'll track it down and then I'll download it off of iTunes and add it to my list. Cool. Hey Pete, kick Becca Becca off. You share yours. Oh your art right. for a bit. Uh, so that, uh, <laughs> you can always just uh Brett, Brett was just sending me a question about that. <laughs> uh yeah I meant to do this about 10 minutes ago but I did. <laughs> uh no I'm just being like I was trying to like like every 15 minutes but can't always keep up with the clock when we're doing this um all right so who's next curtis you sent me your list so so what's this i'm about to share your first soundtrack curtis what uh talk about this all right okay yeah sure so i kind of have like two playlists the first one is like instrumental music which is stuff from like uh different soundtracks and things like that and then my uh my contemporary music list so like my um instrumental stuff i really like uh this composer named uh, Raman Jawidi. He did uh, the Game of Thrones soundtrack and um, Pacific Rim and a lot of stuff like that. Um, and Hans Zimmer, I really like. I really mm -hmm. like his his work. I think he's phenomenal. Um, so those are kind of some of the things. And then even just other instrumental stuff like random things like the Nat King Cold Trio or uh, stuff like that. Um, another composer I really like is um, a Japanese gentleman named Yuichi Sakamoto. Mm. And he did some great soundtracks, like the one with David Bowie, uh, Happy, Merry Christmas, Mr. Lawrence. And um, he's also attributed with being the first guy that created techno music back in the 70s using a synthesized stuff. So he's, he's pretty amazing. It's not letting me and, post um, your list. I don't know why. Huh. Yeah. 
Maybe it knows it's Curtis's list. <laughs> what? No, exactly. <laughs> exactly. It's too confusing. Let me uh, let me try to let me try to see if it'll uh, post a second one. It would not take sure. the first one at all, though. Um, okay. Yeah. Well, the, the uh, second one is like uh, a lot of my the contemporary music I like. Um, okay. Pop and funk and rock and lots of stuff. Um, one of the my favorite artists that I like to listen to. He's um out of Providence, Rhode Island. His name's Sage Francis. If you guys haven't heard him or. I know Pete was saying something to the effect of um, rap music that kind of tells a life story. Mm. He's phenomenal. He's he's this beer, big bearded white guy from Providence, Rhode Island, and um, he's so well respected in the in the hip hop scene that like people like Public Enemy, groups like that, have a lot of respect for him. And he doesn't try and put on any airs or anything like that. Just talking about normal life and things like that. And so Sage Francis is probably is like one of my one of my favorite artists nowadays. But yeah, so that's, that's kind of the gist of most of the stuff I listen to, and uh, it's on the cool. it's on the playlist. But like we were talking about, it all depends on what energy I'm trying to get when I'm working that day. Yeah. Cool. Uh, Cas uh, said Hans is great. Uh, Mark Isham is good as well. If you're into movie composers. Uh, thank you for sharing it. Wubba shared his list. Uh, thank you. Uh, obviously, we're not going to check it out on stream because, you know, someone will give us one of those copyright uh, marks, mm -hmm. uh, but we'll go check it out uh, afterwards. Uh, who else? Um, when I... Okay. Okay. Go, 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 go. go, go. go. I know I'm always classic. I speak when other people tend to speak. I, like, plan it. Um, but uh, yeah, well, yeah, most of the, I do have um, some music I listen to when I start drawing. Uh, especially with my comic Goblins, I do actually have a, some some theme songs. One particular theme song I listen to that puts me in the mood to when I'm what I'm writing about. Mm. And sometimes when I'm drawing about, and I'll listen to that to kind of like get those sort of ideas of what I want to go. Um, I listen, like I said, I'm a Phil Collins fan, and he just remastered everything, so I got a Phil Collins collection, and I listen to that. Um, the I, other, I, I should tell you, I'm biting my tongue about the Phil Collins stuff. <laughs> oh, <that's okay. laughs> he's a he's i know a lot he's either love or hate sort of guy um but a lot of the bands i usually listen to uh, i put on a lot of night wish um uh and that's a finnish band symphonic metal uh, finnish mm. uh band uh dragon force i'm a huge that's why i started oh. with some dragon force yeah huge dragon I'm force a... i actually got to see them in concert oh that's year. cool Ooh. Yes, I, I'm. So... I'm very aware of them. Uh, that's a band that that Brett, uh, my son Brett, turned me on to. Really? He's like, oh, he's yeah. Like, Dad, there's like all kinds of military songs, and I'm like, that's kind of cool. So yeah. you know, military I, I, military metal. I don't know. That's what you call it. Oh yeah, Sabaton is another one you probably heard of. Sabaton. That's probably is that who it was, Brett? Sabaton is a military hey. history. Yeah. Okay. Sabaton yes. is the one I was talking about, not Dragon Force. And I got to see them in concert right after Dragon Force. I got to see Sabaton and Dragon Force, and that was amazing. Especially when it's like, when was the last time Sabaton came to the United States? Five years ago. So it's like a shot in the dark to even come here. Wow. And um, so, and then I listened to some of the other bands, metal bands I listened to. It. This is a strange band called Von Canto from Germany. That's an all acapella metal band. <laughs> Wait. Check them what? out. They're actually, Wait, yeah, they're actually what? good. Yeah. All voices, one wow. drunk. See, Check them out. They're yeah. actually pretty cool. This is what you need to do. Now you need to, you need to, th those are links we need to share here. <laughs> yeah. I'll, 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 uh, I'll make a list and, uh, and uh, they're an interesting band and my new favorite, the one, well, there's two, there's a Canadian band called Unleash the Archers, which are, I love that I'm, band. I'm familiar with them. Yep. And then the one that I just got into is a band called Love Bites from Japan that's five these five japanese ladies that just the guitar work is just off the chart at least to me it is and they're so different because they wear like these white elegant gowns so they look really pretty and then they just just go straight power metal and it's just yeah kind so of, I, it's I, kind of like baby metal have you heard of baby metal i've heard of baby metal they're kind of like that except they sing all in english love bite sings all in english which is a rarity for japanese okay. bands a lot of yeah. them don't but they do yeah. yeah but i've heard of baby metal and all that so yeah barb, those barb are... if you're googling at the same time you should you should google baby metal and, and yeah. it, it will surprise the mess out of you it's these tiny tiny little japanese girls mm -hmm. there's like three of them and they just dive into this heavy metal 
wow yeah. you're like what the heck yeah. <laughs> what is good <laughs> you know little teenage teenagers that thrash yeah 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 I'm uh i think their 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 big song is something like give me give me chocolate <laughs> yeah i think so yeah <laughs> yeah but he, he's also like, like what are you talking about man uh, <laughs> rolling with sabaton i know likes that they do they're all the uh, military history yeah they did an entire band on the history of sweden they just the latest one was world war one and i've learned so much history stuff i never knew about just listening to their songs yeah, because they'll actually yeah. in the booklets do the history of the song and what they're writing about. Yeah, and I th- I find that so cool. Yeah, it's such a cool band. Yeah, so yeah. Well, okay, Becca, you can go if you want to talk. <laughs> Becca. <laughs> <laughs> oh. All right. Um, what what do I listen to? Uh, I guess band wise, uh, like on Spotify, I don't actually create my own playlist because I'm lazy. Um, I just look up already created playlists. I listen to Streetlight Manifesto's radio station on Spotify, um, Emo Forever, which doesn't actually have a lot of emo songs, but <laughs> it's uh, my friend suggested it to me because it's a bunch of music we listen to. Um, I did recently get into the Wood Brothers, though, which is more country which is surprising. Um, I, 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 I really do listen to a lot of random stuff. I, I you, you guys mentioned a lot of my favorite bands as well, and I listen to basically everything. But cool. I don't know. That, I mean, do you want to know the podcasts I listen to? <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I, I mean, yeah, I guess maybe if there's, uh, certainly if there's a, a couple that you listen to, like, I have to listen to this podcast. Yeah. Uh, there's, there's some you don't miss. There's two I, I do that with. It's uh, one called Floss and Humphreys on the Road. They're two stand-up comedians. Okay. Um, and I'm blanking on the name of the other one. Uh, it's an American History podcast is how they start it. I'm so bad tonight. I'm so sorry. I can't remember it. Um, uh, the Dollop. The Dollop. That's what it's called. Okay. Yeah. It's, there are two comedians where they one finds uh history and does research and then he reads it out loud to his friend who just reacts to it live and it's (laughs) (laughs) now so is this like uh strange history or like not common knowledge history or just or what a little bit of mix of both um like sometimes like i think there was one where they're talking about the paper boys um, mm-hmm. yeah. deliver the papers in the city they went on strike so he did his research on that and he talked about it and it was absolutely hysterical just the different names of these children and like <laughs> where are these kids parents like, <laughs> I, like and it's like so insane to think that it's it wasn't really that long ago when all of this was happening and it's it's a huge culture shock within your own country yeah <laughs> It's, it's pretty funny. I, I uh, definitely suggested, or that's the word. I, yeah. I'm so sorry. Yeah, they were actually uh, paper routes when I was a kid. Um, I never had one, but I, I knew some of my friends did. Um, so Heronberg says Sakamoto was one of the founders of Yellow Magic Orchestra. They were the founders of electric pop, electronic pop in Japan. Number two, an importance behind craft work. Uh, Heronberg says, we are concert promoters and we have done several concert uh, presentations for Sage Francis. Great dude. Uh, Wubba says, uh, there, there I listen to all those, all those and band made from Japan. Um, and Baby Metal did the song Karate with Ro- uh, Rob Halford live. Uh, Rob Halford, of course, if you don't know, is the lead singer from Judas Priest. Um, Herrenberg says, Japanese bands are awesome. Our favorite is Shonen Knife, celebrating their 40th anniversary, like a female Ramones from Osaka. I think the only band that I ever really listened to, Japanese band that I ever really listened to was, um, oh, shoot. Uh, the, 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 it was a metal band. They did Thunder in the East. Anybody remember that one? Um, Thunder in the East. Loudness. Loudness was the name of the band. Um, very metal um but yeah all right who else 
Well, I'll talk. I'll talk then. Uh, oh, somebody. Were you about to go, Curtis, again? No. You sure? No, I'm cool. I'm cool. All right. <laughs> uh, well, no. As I said earlier, I I uh, I do I am not uh, one of much variety uh, when it comes to music. Uh, I have a tendency. I'm, I'm a '70s rock guy, and that's pretty much for the most part. That's pretty much all I listen to. Uh, I do have some some uh, other things that I listen to, but they're 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 kin. Um, I listen to melodic metal. Uh, some of the stuff from from today. Um, and I listen to, <clears throat> I listen to bluegrass music. <laughs> okay. uh, now, when I say bluegrass, I, I don't mean country. Okay. Uh, I, I have, uh, one of my playlists. Fiddles and everything. Fiddle. I love the fiddles, fiddles and the banjos. And, and the banjos. I don't like that. that that's, that's, that's on my mood. If they, if they pull out a guitar and uh, electric guitar and some drums, they lose me because then I'm I, then I feel like I'm listening to country music all over again, and I don't want to go there, right? So I, I want to hear I want to hear a fiddle and a banjo and somebody who sounds like they're singing like this, right? That's what I like. Um, uh, someone tried Bobby to bottom boys. Yes, yeah, exactly. That's that that's exactly it. Uh, and and the the playlist I listen to on Spotify is called uh, Oh shoot, I've lost my windows. Um, where did it go? Um, I'm sorry. I had it right, right here opened. It's called Pickers Primer and I will put the, put the link, uh, in the, in the chat. Um, and I just, what I do for most of these playlists, I just, uh, hit play and go. Um, but mostly what I do, uh, so I have the, uh, there are three, um, uh, playlist that i listen to on spotify there's the picker's primer which is uh the the bluegrass music and then i have one called the melodic slash power metal um which is uh, I, I i can't listen to screamo uh, i can't listen to to, to the screamo metal if they're, if they're like this, right? i just yeah. can't do it i, I okay. you know i realize that that's that there's a lot of people who like that but i i i want to hear people who know how to sing um and i want to hear harmonies and i want to hear I, I, I like um, I like I like more complicated music. I guess is the the, the the word that I'm looking for. It's one of the reasons I always love Rush. Um, and then I have one of my one of my uh, new uh, new favorite bands uh, is a band called Theocracy, and um, they're a mix between Queen and Rush and maybe Iron Maiden. Um, oh, that's interesting. Yeah, it, it's uh, it's very metal. There's one, the there's one guy who does all the the composing, and uh, lots of lots of melody. And I have one just called Theocracy All, uh, and on Spotify that you could just add to your playlist. And I literally just put everything Theocracy on on that one and, and it hit play. Does it uh, does it cost you to make a playlist on Spotify? Nope. Mm. No. <laughs> no. I have to put some. Uh, now, when um, when I'm in the mood for more classic stuff, um, I will just go to YouTube, 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 uh, YouTube, and I will <laughs> yeah slip, slip there, Curtis. Sorry about that. Um, <laughs> and, and I will just type in something like Led Zeppelin full album uh, physical graffiti, right? And it comes up with a playlist, and I just hit play, and it plays through the entire album. Um, I'm a big Led Zeppelin fan. I, I write to a, a lot of Zeppelin, um, and I write to a lot of uh, uh, Theocracy and Neil Morse um, because I, I know the songs well enough that I don't have to stop and listen to them. To They don't distract me from my thinking and my writing. Um, they also, uh, yeah, prog rock. Neil, Neil Morse is prog rock. Uh, Neil Morse, for those who don't know, he um, he plays with the drummer who used to play with um, Dream Theater. Uh, and, and I didn't realize it was called prog rock, uh, which stands for progressive rock. Uh, apparently Rush was one of the, Rush and Yes uh, were early prog rock bands. And I absolutely love that stuff. Um, and, and and Neil Morse is is one of those. Um, 
Uh, several comments here. Uh, Royal Airship says, Bluegrass and the old-timey tunes are an American heritage. And don't forget, Scott plays banjo. Uh, he means Scott uh, uh, Wakefield, who uh, is working on uh, Steam Patriots for um, uh, for Silver Line. Scott is in the, uh, uh, usually participates in the Wednesday stream. Uh, Wubba says, I'm sure on Tool, it's, it's my number one go-to, especially when I'm starting a new project and need to get settled into it. Tool, I'm not sure what Tool is. It must be a music band. What's that? It's a band. Tool. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, it's a band. I was, all right. I was thinking it was like a, a, a Spotify or a, a Pandora or something like that. Uh, sorry about that, Wubba. I, I do apologize for not knowing Tool. Uh, see, I told you, I really am I'm very limited. Uh, you know, if they, I didn't like the grunge stuff, and yeah, um, I will tell you this: is, Does anybody know who uh, Greta Van Fleet is? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So someone told me you need to go check out Greta Van Fleet, and I'm like, eh, whatever. You know, I, that's usually what I say when someone says, "I'm like, yeah, whatever." Uh, if they're not Led Zeppelin or Aerosmith, I don't care. Um, but then I heard a snippet of a song, and I'm like, that's Led Zeppelin. And then I listened to it closely, and I'm, I'm like, okay, no, that's not Led Zeppelin. Who the heck is that? It was Greta Van Fleet. And these guys are like 20 and 21 years old. And I mean, Led Zeppelin, big Led Zeppelin fans won't confuse them because they they don't, they, they, they're not like, they're not Led Zeppelin, right? Uh, but if, you, if you're not a big Led Zeppelin fan and you play a Zepp song and then a Greta Van Fleet song, it's, I can see how you could easily be confused because they're obviously heavily influenced by, by Zeppelin. These guys are really, really good. Um, I, I, will, uh, I will confess to having uh, done the same thing to Greta Van Fleet on YouTube uh, a little bit. As well. Let me just listen to the Greta Van Fleet all and just let it play, right? Um, Herrenberg says, prog rock is fun. Dudes take it very seriously, though. Yeah, and I think uh, I, I do think prog rock is, is very serious. They get serious about uh, the the way their, their tunes are built. Uh, Wubba says, my number two is typo negative. Uh, Herrenberg said, okay, he's talking to this response. Um, Herrenberg says, Neil Morse founded Spock's beard. Uh, Tool is prog rock like Rush. So, uh, yeah, it might be something that, that, that I would like. Just more zen and thought provoking. Um, so, anybody else? I've got two different playlists. You know, in the morning time, it's got to be more aggressive. In the afternoon, it's more mellow. Okay. You know, morning's nothing but metal and punk and anything I can play that's hard. And then by the evening, you know, like I said, I'm down to Dylan, Tom Petty, and, and Johnny Cash. You know, I kind of wind down the day. <laughs> okay. I'm a huge fan of Mumford and Sons, but I have to split their songs into two different um, playlists. One goes into my grit and grind and one goes into my alternative <laughs> because they, they have a pretty wide range. I, I actually have a, a massive range of tastes and songs. I will listen to almost anything but um, opera. And uh, I listen to <laughs> classical. I, I listen to classical too. I, 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 like I have well. listened to classical as well. And also, although I appreciate it, I just have never been able to get into really heavy rap. Yeah. But uh, but I appreciate the message that the rap has. I just can't uh, now I know the mixtape to send to Barbara. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Pedro Ca um, and I, if I mispronounce your last name, I do apologize. Uh, I think it's Caicedo says, uh, I guess he's listing uh, some bands, Fu Manchu, Eagles of Death Metal, and Caius uh, are, are some, uh, some bands to listen to. Yeah. Um, so here's a, here's, a, here's a weird thought then. So we, we, let's talk about so maybe tone a little bit uh, of what you're creating when you create. So um, that, that's pretty important for me. I think when I when I write, it's funny because when I was writing uh, Cat and Mouse in the '90s, I was listening to a lot of Dokken. And um, for those of you who don't know, Dokken was one of the the, the early '80s, mid '80s hair bands. Um, and they they just they George their guitar player George they're shredded. And and several of my I was listening to Dokken and Queensryche, and that's that's kind of where I was trying to get to. Uh, and several of the the stories, ti story titles in Cat and Mouse are actually story titles, or I'm sorry, are actually song titles. 
from from the the bands and i had a couple of fans actually write me and say you must be a docking fan because they recognized in you know a couple of issues one you're gonna say oh cool there's a song like that but when you get like three in a row like those are three docking songs <laughs> you know and so i actually had someone write me and say you must be a docking fan yeah pedro says george lynch yeah uh, george lynch was the the guitar player for uh for docking and he was just incredible or he is incredible. i don't know if he's still still what he does but um uh, but yeah, so you could see uh, song titles for me for the story titles, and I actually still do it. Um, what people don't realize is that the two issues of Cat and Mouse that have been recently published are song titles from the stuff that I was listening to at the time. Um, and do I intentionally do it? Yes, I do. Um, the the it is it's what I'm listening to as I'm creating. And so I search for a title that works for, for what the story is. Um, but yeah, so that's me. What about you guys? Uh, depends. If I'm, if I'm doing something that's um, kind of an easy type of page and, and mellow, I'll listen to Nora Jones. Uh, she's very bluesy. And um, if I'm, I'm, want to listen to something really new kind of new aging and really really kind of depressing actually i'll listen to the jesse stone um soundtrack by jeff beale he's what, got what, a, i don't even know what that is What's... jesse stone was um it's a, a mini series the reoccurring mini series with um tom Selleck as a as a small town sheriff really i'm a tom uh, Selleck fan Oh yeah, it's, it's a great series, absolutely fantastic series. Um, but Jeff Beale did the soundtrack for all of those mini series, and his his music is so evocative of kind of like dreary, moody days, you know. And so, um, I'll I'll play that once in a while. Yeah, I just happen to remember this. This is from um, the one of the very first panels in uh, the first issue of Cat and Mouse. And you can see he's actually uh, humming a tune there. And those are actually uh, lyrics? Lyric, lyrics from a song at the time. Does anybody recognize it? You can't see it. It's too can't small. Read it. Yeah. You're going to have to read it to us, kiddo. Oh, you can't, you can't read it? Oh, <laughs> I it's think you have small, to sing it to us. Well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 I'm not singing it. The, the, the words are, go again on my own. See, I, I accidentally put a little bit of tune in there. I hate that. Yeah. Uh, this, uh, I mean, this is something I actually uh, will we'll do frequently is have uh, characters humming a tune, singing, singing it. And it's funny because at Full Sail, um, ha ha, Pops got it, White Snake. That's absolutely it. Yep. Good job, oh, Pops. Yeah. Pops Van Zant popped on and and, uh, and got it. Absolutely, that's right. Um, and, and you know, at Full Sail, they which is wrong. I don't I don't understand why they do that at Full Sail um they'll tell students no you can't use any lyrics at all you can't and you actually can legally you can't do the entire song obviously you can't even do an entire verse but you can put like i can't remember it was like seven or eight words uh that you can actually use and you're within your your uh fair use uh legally in your, in your fair use of course full cell uh, i should probably shouldn't say that since i'm recording uh full cell uh opts for the don't take any chances uh you know don't don't risk it if you have it uh if you have that then they could come after you so don't even risk it um but yeah uh i was going to show i was going to show these these are the 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 titles for the the two issues of cat and mouse that have uh just been published the first one was city of destruction and then the second one was uh draw the line and i realize i forget that it's, you're really big on my screen but i forget yeah. that uh on there it's going to be uh this big yeah, I am. Sorry. So sorry about that. Um, but yeah, I, I'll leave. I, I won't, uh, unless someone gets it, I won't talk about where those come from until kind of after the series is done. But um, but yeah. All right. So someone else, jump in. Well, this is something kind of dorky, but of course, that's everything I do is dorky. Is, um, you know, like I, I, I'm here in LA, of course, and I'm sure everywhere, but LA, there's a certain like coffee shop scene where everybody who's writing their script or working on their big project after they're going to pitch and at the coffee shop 
taking up way too much space on their laptop and you know, <laughs> yeah. making a big scene of themselves working on their on their next big open. Yeah. Um, but it's Look kind of me, I'm a this. screenwriter. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, so it's, it's, there's that kind of vibe. But sometimes it's cool to go to a coffee shop and just draw and be somewhere else. So, but with the quarantine stuff like that, now I just go and I make my own coffee at home, and uh, I go to YouTube and put on the type in the search word coffee shop music. And there's no, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> I totally do. I totally do. And so, and then, and it's like just like perfectly relaxing, the most non-offensive music in the world. And I just kind of zone out and, and draw in the morning and stuff like that. So that's cool. That's, yeah. So it's kind of funny, you know. But that's one of that the is that is a coffee is. shop. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Heronberg, you get you got guess the title there. Here I go again on my own from uh, White Snake. And Pops Van Zant said uh, Doctor Strange uses Rush lyrics in Defenders Forty Five in his spell. And they give credit to Rush. Um, I, I don't remember that. That's kind of cool. Uh, Heronberg says, we put two lines of uh, a Baja song, Terror Couple, Kill Colonel, and our debut is issue didn't, uh, don't get us in trouble, please. <laughs> yeah, we won't tell anybody. Uh, I do th I do think, I mean, there's, there is fair use, right? You can, as long as you, uh, as long as you don't produce too much of it, they're not going to, you're not going to get in trouble. Um do you guys take your music with you on the road when you go to conventions? That's a good question. Well, it's 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 all on my phone, so wherever my phone yeah. goes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's do you great. listen to it in the in the in the hotel room, like you, when you're doing commissions or anything? Some people listen it to, listen to it at their table next year. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's true. That. Yeah. Oh <laughs> my gosh. Out of me. Oh, I cannot stand that. I've well, got all my playlists out. on my iPhone. So Roland, I have to chime in. Do you remember? I remember when Roland was at Malibu, he had his desk and Roland has his own, as he knows, distinct taste in music. And we had one of our uh, editorial assistants, Larry Reynosa, who had a very different set of music uh, ideology. And he would always play the music and him and Roland would rib each other all day long. <laughs> about, and Larry would bring in this big old, you know, we call it a ghetto blaster, but whatever you want to call it. Jam box is what just, we call them. Yeah, he, he would blare The Cure and The Smiths and you name it. And Roland would always give him hell about it. And yeah. he would you would take it, but he would still keep playing it. But I never <laughs> uh, it, was, it was an yeah. ongoing battle. Ongoing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, again, I, 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 I am quick to admit that I, you know, if it's not the kind of music that I listen to, I consider it crap. <laughs> <laughs> And, I, and I'm okay with that. I can live with that. Um, no, Nothing I, wrong. I, say, say again, Mike. Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I used to have an old old boss that I, I started. I would play music, and I wouldn't listen to head because I, I can listen to headphones so long, and the headphones started to like hurt mm. my, my ears. So I got to like you know take it off, and I listen to this music, and also because I don't want you know if I'm trying to do something that, on the of drawing, and like the chord gets in the way. Right, but I noticed my boss, and I played specific music. Music, his mood would change, and I actually started like actually testing this out <laughs> and playing different music to see how I would affect him. That's funny. And I noticed he'd get kind of happy, and a lot of times he would come out like, "What are you listening to?" And I think the funniest one is when I put in Jamiroquai, and um, <laughs> and he's like, because he he's listening. To, he used to me listening to metal, and he's like what is going on what is this i'm just like it's just my music or whatever but i noticed i would affect his temperament that was that was entertaining i actually want to start writing down notes and doing scientific experiments to see how i can affect them yeah <laughs> I, I used to work at a japanese restaurant as a waiter and when the boss was out and we wanted people to finish up closer at the end we put on thrash metal so you'd have all these old japanese people eating you know their rice and also you put on the thrash metal and they just be like gunning it. And I don't know if it's because <laughs> the music got them ramped or if they just eating with the <laughs> yeah uh, but they would just be like or we get, we get them out of there real quick when the boss uh, that's the boss hilarious know, you know <laughs> I, I heard somebody say once before it's like yeah I can't eat with uh, heavy metal music going because I eat too fast <laughs> yeah I know that <laughs> <laughs> Which I can, oh. yeah, I can kind of see. I guess that would be funny. <laughs> well, there's a, there's a lot of comic book artists who are actually also in garage bands. Yeah. Uh, I, there was a famous garage band, Seduction of the Innocent. They used to play yeah. uh, at San Diego all the time with uh, Bill Mooney and Miguel Ferrer. 
Yeah, I never got to hear those. Oh, they Friday. were awesome. Yeah, and Billy. I wanted to. Um, and there was, um, do you know who Max Allen Collins is? I do, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, Miss, Miss, uh, Miss, Miss uh, Tree. And he thank does a, you, Miss Tree, yeah. And Dick Tracy does a bunch of, uh, he also wrote The Green Mile and uh, does a bunch I of mysteries. That. Yeah, Amy, he, he's from Muscatine, Iowa, which is about 14 miles from where I was raised on a farm. Well, that's kind of cool. And um, my cousin Terry Beatty was also from Muscatine. Um, but Max Allen Collins had a garage band uh, called Prusin. And uh, he actually played at my high school prom. <laughs> wow. <laughs> You know, I, I, it's funny you say that because I, I find a lot of um, a lot of comic creators uh, also. I mean, I, I, obviously, as creative people, we tend to be creative in a lot of stuff that we do. Uh, but I find a lot of comic creators also uh, play musical instruments. So, yeah. what about it, Barb? What do you play? I play piano and get this drums. Cool. I was Very a drummer. Cool. I had the whole drum set, the whole kit and caboodle. Sweet. Now, do you still yeah. have a uh, Do you still have a kit? No, I do not. When uh, I got little little children, I couldn't play anymore, and I ended up. We were poor as church mice, and I ended up selling my uh, my Ludwig set for um, Christmas money. Oh man! To buy uh, Christmas presents for my kids. Yep. Yep. No, I, there were a set of pearls. That's right. There were pearls. Nice. It's funny because my, my daughter has a picture. I'm a drummer also. And, and my daughter has a picture because she asked me some years ago um, if I could buy the set, what would I want? And I went to the Ludwig uh, website and, and found it. And I said, that's the set I would want right there. It's a double bass. I've never played a double bass, but I would love to, to learn. Mm -hmm. And um, so she she got a snap. She has a snapshot of it somewhere. She says, you know, when I get a million bucks, I'm going to buy you the set, Dad. <laughs> and I'm like, oh. I haven't played in 30, 30 some years. I never played. Yeah. Yeah. So who else? Who else plays an instrument? Be um, I know Be Becca's uh, an athlete. Uh, yeah. You would think because my dad was in a band when I was a kid, but I played the flute in elementary school. Um, but that's about it. Like, uh, I know how to do uh, smoke on the water on the guitar but i actually don't <laughs> um i know so like, why did you give well, up the flute <laughs> um american pie came out and <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah and i have that type of friend group so uh yeah yeah i i no longer play the, all my friends are play, are in bands though i'm like one of the only one that doesn't play any instrument yeah so you 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 have a you have a creative uh, your uh friend circle is creative they're yes. creative people you mm -hmm. do comics and they do music yeah yeah actually my uh one friend's band they were working with the bassist of disturbed on their last album oh that's pretty cool yeah so i got to meet john um i don't know if he likes me all that much but <laughs> <laughs> why would he not uh, like you I um didn't Did you, know I didn't like I like I saw him but it didn't register in my head who he was and oh, well that's not that's yeah. not a, that's not an unusual I, he's well, a bass player for Pete's sakes yeah um, <laughs> I think I asked him if he wanted to see my friend's tattoo um which is located <laughs> in a specific area oh no and got really uncomfortable and i was like oh no and my my friends who are in the band they're like you're just not going to talk to john anymore i'm like that's a good, that's a good <laughs> wait so you offered to show your friend's tattoo mm -hmm. <laughs> i don't I know like as you bought it, here's your friend <laughs> well in fairness i paid for it as the dare <laughs> the dare is we were 18 you know kids that she had to moon anyone at my say because I paid for it <laughs> and show them. And she's like, please don't make me do this. <laughs> yeah. So that was an uncomfortable, yeah, that was an uncomfortable meeting, but yeah. Well, I, my I, cats are, are, are easily visible in non-embarrassing places. Yeah. <laughs> Same. My friend, unfortunately, not so much. <laughs> That's what happens when you lose a bit, right? Yeah, it was 
we were like a dare I dared her to do it and I was just shocked that she did it so I was like I'll pay for it but this is the reason why I'm paying for it you have to moon anybody at any time I say that's so funny yeah. I was in my late 40s before I even got my first hat wow yeah I was 16 you were 16 yeah I was what, uh, 16 or 17 no I think it was like my 17th or 18th birthday my mom got it for me Wow, that's cool. My I was going to ask you, do you have to have parental permission at that young age? Uh, at sixteen, yeah. Um, I don't, I don't remember. I think I can't remember if it was my sixteen or seventeenth birthday, or seventeenth and eighteenth birthday. But right. uh, you know, uh, she, I just remember she was the one that brought me and paid for the tattoo. The rule cool. was in the house: if you wanted a tattoo, the same one, for more than a year and didn't change your mind, then you're allowed to get it after 16 in my house i got Ooh. one my first one my 25th wedding anniversary in vegas and you know what they say what happened in vegas, stays in vegas. <laughs> yeah. but my son bought me my second one Ooh. wow that's kind of cool yeah no no tattoos and it I just always assumed if I got people like, why don't you get one? I'm like, because I'd like it. And then a year later, I'd be like, this sucks. I want it off. Yeah. It's just being an artist. I, I just don't know what I would get that I'd be satisfied with the rest of my life. So I'm just like, no. Nah. Well, I drew my second tattoo myself. So yeah. Did, did you do it yourself? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. I don't that, put anything the, on me that I don't draw. Well, myself. see, that's the thing. I couldn't that's do cool. that because if I put something on that I draw and then a few years later, I get better and look at it. Mm -hmm. yeah it doesn't work for me so i'm like no no that's like don't look at that tattoo i could draw much better now um so <laughs> so uh what about the rest of you uh curtis pete aaron mike play an instrument play oh, no. hell no <laughs> okay wow uh, no musical talent at all no that's yeah i ain't gotten uh it, it's pretty interesting um uh, because i know when when we first kicked up the cat and mouse stuff like two years ago uh dean plays guitar dean zachary plays guitar kevin gallagher i think plays bass uh i think he's got his own little uh garage band going back in in i think he's in san diego or la somewhere is in california um and i know that uh, jeff whiting who i travel um or well when when we had these things called conventions uh mm -hmm. I, I would i would travel with him quite a bit and uh and he plays bass so um, there, I know there's 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 quite a few. And of course, I knew about Seduction of the Innocent and, and, and so on and so on. So I knew a lot of people. Um, it's uh, the same uh, too. Oh yeah. Yeah, like like you mentioned, I do I do a little bit of drumming, but the drumming I do ties to the the martial arts because we have the those uh it looks like dragons, but they call them lions, where people are under this costume and they do stuff for Chinese New Year, and they can't oh, yeah. really see much. So yeah, the drums that you do, the beats you do, tell them which direction to go, or if they're about to plow into somebody you can switch yeah. the drum beat to make them reverse but uh that and like some percussion yeah did we talk about that last week a little bit a little, little bit little okay bit, yeah. i was gonna say i because I, I remember us talking i remember you and i at least having a conversation of, about some uh drums and the way they're used uh to to give uh signals um yeah. Wubba said he got his first hat at uh 16 um and he said, uh, I had a former supervisor start humming Christian hymns uh, if she even heard my music, uh, <laughs> heard a little of my music while work, walking in my work area. He said, I tried finding middle ground by playing Baron Cross or Striper, but to no avail. And Wubba <laughs> says he plays guitar. Not like Zach Wild, but but uh, he plays guitar. So, uh, yeah, it's not unusual, I, I think, that, um, that comic book creators also do – some other creative thing and music is certainly uh certainly a, a common one so um so i think i'm running out of questions about uh, uh music and what you listen to but i do have one other uh, other, other question so one of the things that uh, i fi found find i don't listen to it quite as much now uh but one of the things i i found that i would listen to frequently are um concept albums um for instance, uh, Queensryche did um, their con their concept album was uh, uh, shoot what was it called Empire I think, and what's that? Great album. Yeah, and it was awesome. basically one big long story. Another one of my favorites is uh, Planet P Project, which is um, Tony Carey who played in uh, 
Oh crap. Uh, do you play Rainbow or Deep Purple? Um, it's keyboardist. But um, his tell it's a it's it's I think it's a two album set. Uh, but it's one long story in which it's it's set in this post apocalyptic. Uh, world in which this one boy named Artie has these powers, and everybody's after uh, after Artie. Um, it, it's uh, it's fascinating, but it's the kind of thing that it, it's it's Pink Floydish uh, a little bit in its sound. Uh, not not the really weird grooving in a cave with a pick Pink Floyd, but you know more Dark Side of the Moon kind of uh, uh, Floyd. Um, but so so the music is really easy to listen to, but but if you do want to catch the the the, the meaning behind it, you've got to listen to all the all the the lyrics and tell the story. Uh, I do highly re recommend uh, Planet P Project, uh, but it, again, it's it's not one of these that you can say I'm going to sit down and I'm going to 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 draw or focus on something and 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 play it. Now you could, and I do. Uh, because I know it, but if you've never heard it before, you're going to find yourself wanting to listen to what the story is. Um, I think the quintessential concept album would be the Who's Tommy. Oh, that, that's a great one. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. there's, yeah. there's a cool hip hop one called um, Prince, Among, Prince, Prince Among Thieves by Prince Paul. He's this famous producer, and it's a whole story. And different rappers play different characters. And then the end battle between the two characters is a rap battle, but it's actually like a gunfight. But uh, Prince, Prince Among Thieves is really good. I've been trying to search for that for years. <laughs> oh, it's so good. I heard it once uh, my sister played it when we were kids, and we haven't been able to find it. What's the name of that? <laughs> uh, Prince, Prince Among Thieves by Prince Paul, who's the, the producer. Yeah, it's, it's great. It's a really fun album. Yeah, I've listened to some really uh, 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 Unleashed Archers, which I think Roland listens to. I've heard, uh, the yeah. last the last album, Apex, was a concept album. I didn't even realize it, and then I listened to some videos <laughs> where the lead singer uh, she explained the whole story. I just didn't even realize it was a concept album, and then they have a new album coming out that is a continuation, so they actually make it a sequel to the story. But my favorite one was was Von Kahn to the acapella band, where they actually had a famous. And I can't remember who's a famous voice actor from Hollywood. They hired him to introduce each song. So he told it like this sort of verbose story about warriors and knights. And every song he would do this little intro snippet and then introduce the song. So that he tied, they tied the whole thing as like this guy sitting by a fire telling the story. Then he would introduce the new song and the new story. And it was it was really cool. It's called Voices of Fire. And that whole oh, album cool. was really cool. Yeah. So, um, so before I forget this, you guys make sure that you send me um, links to your playlist that you can get. Okay. As soon as we're done, Pete, I know that you're you you, you bed calling you, man. But but as soon as we're done, put together some links to your playlist and zap those to me. And what I'll do is I'll include those in the information when I when I um because I go always go back and edit the post to make sure I get all of our contact info there. And we'll we'll make sure that we put up all of our um, uh, links to our playlist. I can send you links to my. I am one of the actually. I still listen to CDs mostly most of the time because of albums. So I don't actually have playlists, but I'll send you. I mean, my al my bands and some my, songs I like. There's mine something. right here. Yeah. yeah. Well, so so here here's yeah. what I would ask you to do then, because because I get you, I totally get you. Just yeah. find figure out who your who your you would say run to YouTube and look it up, and then just send me that link. That's what I was thinking. Just yeah, you, yeah, you you can probably find it there. So, anybody else? Anything about music? I want to run through. If you don't have anything, I'm going to run through these real quick. Uh, this one is Cat Mouse 14, Bullets to Spare. Where does that come from? Anybody know? Oh, I should watch the chat too in case they get it. Bullets to Spare. Come on, come on, come on. I gave you hints early. All right, I'll, I'll wait and see if anyone on the on the stream. Uh, I didn't realize so many of my titles were all. This one is "Sight for Sore Eyes." Anybody? Terrible with titles. So it's a song titles, yeah. right? You know, Nobody. Yeah. Here is oh, here's one. Come on. Take hold of the flame. The double page spread from. Oh, cat, cat mouse 10. That Take over the flame. Familiar. It should be. Yeah. What? 
Oh, really, I'll get to I'm one that shocked. somebody knows. Oh, oh, here, here. This one's can't. This one's hard to read, but it goes down the the side here called Dead on Time. Dead on Time. Anybody? Anybody? Hi. I haven't gotten a single one of them yet. I'm just pointing. <laughs> oh, you should get this one. Keep yourself alive. Oh, keep yourself alive. Yes. Who? Keep yourself Who? alive. Yep. Yes. That's it. Who? Who is it? Queen. Who is it? Huh? Queen. Yes, Queen. Queen. Yes, very good. There's a Queen song. Uh, oh, this one's going to be a little bit harder. This one's called Without Warning. I'm like, again, I'm probably like Barbara. Like, if you could tell me a title, uh, it's you Queen's won't get right. it. It's you, Queen's you, right. Oh, is it? Because you play yeah. the song, and I'm like, oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Barb, Barb, you, you got to get this one. Mike, you should probably get this one too. This one's called Ride in the Storm Out. Oh, Ride in the Storm <laughs> Out. Yep. Who is it? I, I, my mind just went blank, but I know the song. <laughs> Mike? I'm blanking. I, 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 I've got blanking. I saw them live. I can hear it. I can hear it in my head perfectly. I can't remember the name of the band. And, and I was so disappointed. Um, they sounded just like the album. And I'm like, really? Uh, I could have listened to the album at home. <laughs> Ario Speedwagon. That's it. Oh, Thank yeah. you. Yeah. yeah. Why I used an Ario Speedwagon song, I don't really know. I'm not really an Ario Speedwagon fan, um, but it worked for the for the title. Yeah, Wubba well, got it. Said Ario. Uh, all right, Has good. anybody so, seen uh, the 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 manga? Read the manga or the anime JoJo's Bizarre Adventure? I know of all it. The- yeah, all the characters are named after American bands. So there's a guy whose name is Ario Speedwagon, Mr. Ario Speedwagon. <laughs> there's a guy named Vanilla Ice. Oh and, no! Uh, yeah, it is. It is. It is. It is hilarious. But yeah, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. Every character is like named after an American band. That's funny. That yeah, sounds funny, yeah. actually. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, cool. Uh, anybody have anything else you want to say about music and listening to music and why you create? We talked about a lot of fun stuff, cool stuff. Excuse me. No, everybody good. Uh, we did not have a, an indie review for the week. Um, excuse me, but I know that we'll, uh, Wayne Hall is going to be doing uh, the next one. So next week uh, we'll we'll have it uh, Wednesday, and then again on on uh, next week for uh, the indie review. This time next week. Um, oh, let me pull up my schedule here. Um, so tomorrow night, good silver line 101 at 9 p.m. with our very own Barb Kelberg. Uh, we're, go- we're going to dive in and uh, find out uh, what makes Barb tick. Um, oh, God, like a bomb. <laughs> so, so, we're going to ask all kinds of questions about her early childhood or early comic influences and all that kind of stuff. So uh, if you've got questions, uh, send them to me, uh, and I'll be sure that I ask them. Um, and I have on our list that we're going to be talking about coloring, but I don't have any specifics. So hold tight as to what we're going to be talking about uh, Wednesday and uh, next Sunday, because I am not sure about that. Probably need- We've been so focused on the, uh, the Kickstarter that I haven't, uh, I haven't paid too much attention to our, our schedule of, of stuff. But, um, but yeah, so tomorrow night we will be back, Silver Line 101 with Barb. Uh, Wednesday night, our Wednesday, our Silver Line Wednesday Wham crew, I think that's what they decided they want to call themselves, Silver Line Wednesday Wham, uh, will be on uh, 9 p.m. And then we will be uh, back on again uh, next week uh, for whatever our topic happens to be. Uh, same, same Silver Line time, same Silver Line channel uh so we'll where do where can folks find you curtis where can people find you on the interwebs yeah you can uh find me on facebook just curtis fujita and i'm also on instagram and youtube uh, under my martial arts school tiger crane 805 and also on facebook uh, tiger crane Kung Fu. That's where you can find me. very cool barb what about you um barbara kaleberg that's k double a l V-E-R-G, I'm the only Barbara Kaleberg on the internet, so it's not hard to find me. Googly, I can, I'm also on DeviantArt. Um, I'm on Twitter and Facebook under, under that name. 
And I don't think we said it live, but happy anniversary to you and, and Hubley. Thank you. 39 yeah. years. Yeah. That's, that's anniversary. anniversary. Yeah. 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 That's uh, 39 years is an awesome achievement. Kate. Well, if you count Kate. the year that we lived together in, in illegal bliss, um, <laughs> it's, it's been 40 years. Yep. Back then, yeah. that was really pushing the envelope. So Yeah. You know, I, I, dated my, I dated VJ for seven years, and she's like, you know, we really need to count that somehow. We, she said, well, there's seven years that we were together, but we weren't married. She said, we should really count that. It's just, you know, we should be, it's more than 30 years. And I'm like, I don't know what it is. But... Pete, what about you? Where can people find you on the interwebs? Oh, it's real easy. It's uh, Peter Clinton Art, and you'll find that Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Deviant Art. Uh, yeah, I somehow cornered the name on that. So, <laughs> Me too. Yeah, that's yeah. that's that's pretty cool. Uh, Cassisi says thanks for the live sessions, guys. Uh, I learned a lot from them. Uh, and he said happy anniversary, Barb. Uh, thanks for joining us, Cassisi. Hey, look, don't don't be afraid to. Uh, uh, Cassisi is the guy I was telling you about, my former student who's got his comic uh, that he sent to the printer. Uh, don't be afraid to ask us some hard questions. Uh, we need some hard questions. Uh, Aaron, what about you? Where can people find you? um instagram at the a l h uh 3810 uh facebook uh humphreys illustration h-u-m-p-h-r-e-s illustration um my godlings is on uh, webtoons to search godlings um and then i have a store humphreys illustration at bigcartel.com i think that's my little online store with all my all my stuff <laughs> sweet i think that's it yeah i think that's it right now Yep, and as a reminder, um, you can you'll be able to find all of these links in the information. Uh, so I know there's, there's some of them come across pretty quick, and you try to type them in really fast. I'll put them all in there. Uh, Mike, what about you? Where can where can folks find you and uh, Man the Mask? Uh, you can find me at amkcomics.com. That's my website, and then you can find under the Facebook the same thing, and then Mike W. Belcher on Twitter and on Facebook. Sweet. And Becca, Hi. how about you? <laughs> yes, you can find me on Facebook at Rebecca Winslow, Instagram at comic underscore art with K's, and Twitter, which I never remember my handle because I keep <laughs> forgetting it exists. Yeah. No, but I think you have it. I, I I don't remember it, but I do have it. It's on yeah. my. It's on my. So I'll I'll make sure I put it on the. Uh, yeah. I'm on trying the, to get better about stuff. using Twitter. <laughs> trying. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's one of those things. I don't know whether I, I want to encourage that or not because it's just a mess. On Twitter. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's uh, yeah. It's a. Uh, but yeah, it's one of those things you almost kind of feel like you have to do it to promote your stuff, you know. But mm -hmm. yeah, it's a mess there. Uh, but yeah, you can find me uh, on Facebook, uh, Roland Man. You can find me on Twitter at Man Roland. Uh, and then, of course, the Silverline links. Uh, we've got the website, uh, silverlinecomics.com. And you can find us on Facebook. Many of you are probably already watching us on Facebook, and we appreciate the, uh, your views and your support. Please don't forget to like and share and, and favorite and heart and love and follow and all that other stuff that you do. Subscribe on, uh, on YouTube etc etc um and thank you for watching so until next time make mine make silver mine line. Silver silver line. Line. <laughs> good night everyone good night, good night. Good night.